Hello from Perfection Kennels. Uh, one of the things that we want to talk about today is basically what we're calling the long and the short of it. Uh, made my living as a trainer teaching people how to use these things. I know not everybody agrees with them, but most people who don't agree with them don't understand them. But <coughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. One of the main things that we, problems we see with people when they come to training with their collars and with their dogs, they'll come to the clinic or they've talked to someone and, and, and they'll have what will be the short prongs. These are long prongs. And the difference is about, that's about half that distance, the length of it. And what happens is whenever you have the short prongs in your dog, on your collar, on your dog, because you're trying to be careful or trying to be nice or be, think it's more humane, whatever you want to say, it's actually less humane. It's actually more detrimental to the dog because what happens is, is that you have to have this collar on your dog so tight to make that contact touch the skin of the dog that when you're trying to use follow procedure, good timing with your training, you end up with a situation where your dog is intermittently getting hit with the collar and you are not able to control it. One of the gr things that we talk about in all of our training, I have for 20 some years, 30 years, is your timing. The timing when you push the button, the timing when you let it off. And if you have your collar too loose or you have in the short prongs, it doesn't matter if you're hitting the button or not if because the collar will do this off the skin of the dog. It can be tight, the dog put its head down, it'll loosen up. So important to remember when you're thinking about using a collar, you start using a collar, practice putting it on the dog. When you place it on the dog, it may feel tight. And some of these new collars with these uh, thin, the thin uh, straps are more difficult to get tight. But what will happen is you'll feel up here and go, oh, it's, well, that's not tight enough. And you, know, you tighten up a little more and then it feels tight, but then what happens is, is you can get in a position where the dog is not getting contacted. Mm -hmm. So to place this on your dog tight enough to make it so that you have good timing, it has to be pretty snug. Real important to remember that, so wherever the dog moves, your timing is correct. And so one of the things that we see in clinics and with the working with clients all the time, that's one of the biggest, and it happens to us too, put the collar on the dog, go out there and go, Okay, you'll see that, and the dogs are so smart, they're so in tune to things, that I've seen dogs with the collar is so loose that they realize when they put their head down like that, that it goes off. So you'll see the, the client or me hit the button, and the dog will put his head down, the collar's loosened up, and it shuts off, and they stand their way, because it works. If it works once, they'll try it again. So real important, go with the long prongs on whatever collar you're using. And make sure you got it snug enough to, so that you're allowed to have the proper timing with the dog. Because if it's intermittent, it's very confusing to the dog. And we'll talk, you'll see in our videos and stuff that we do, the videos we sell, the timing of the use of the collar is so important. We've been teaching this for years and years and years. And with proper timing, you can get a lot done with your dog. But you have to have the long prongs to make it so you're not strangling your dog to have it tight enough. Short prongs are less humane, believe it or not. Thank you.